Hello everyone, so today we're going to go over section 5.1 from your textbook which is called Simple Interest. This whole chapter is about finance and as a result it requires you to, to do a lot of work on your calculator. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is I will show um, screen recordings of me typing in um, the problems on my calculator and hopefully that will um, help guide you to how you will plug it in on your calculator. It may look slightly different. Um, the calculator that I'm using is a TI-83, um, but hopefully, like I said, um, the screen recordings will help you um, to be able to figure out how to plug it in on your calculator. A couple of vocabulary words that you should know um, that will, you will see a lot throughout this chapter. Um, the first word is principal. Principal is the original amount of money that you invest. Sometimes it's just the amount of money you start with. So if you go and open up a savings account at your local bank, the principal is going to be how much you have when you open up that savings account. The interest is how much the investor profits from the investment. Okay, so some people will get this confused with interest rate, but the interest is how much the um, what the profit is for the investor. So it's about it's an it's it is an an amount of money. Excuse me. Interest rate, on the other hand, it's a percent. Um, so it'll be a percentage. This is also sometimes called if you watch commercials. Sometimes for credit cards, they'll say APR. That's annual percentage rate. Um, so that's the same thing as the interest rate. So this is the percent of the principal that becomes interest. So this determines how much the investor profits um, off of your investment or off of their investment. The time or the term of the loan is the amount of time for which the money is invested. In our textbook, time will always be measured in years. So sometimes they'll give you an amount of time in days and we'll have to convert that into years, which is really easy. I'll show you how to do it. Here's our first formula. Um, you will have a formula sheet for this chapter, um, so you won't have to memorize these formulas. And I will give you this same formula sheet when you get to the final exam. Um, what's important to me is that you know how to use these formulas. Now, one thing you will have to have memorized is what all of the letters represent. So it says, simple interest means that the amount of interest is calculated as a percent per year of the principal. Okay, so what that means is that, um, let's say that you go and buy a car, and this car um, uses simple interest, or your car loan uses a simple interest loan, okay? Um, this means that the amount of interest that the investor is going to collect from you is calculated as a certain percentage per year of the principal, the principal here being the amount that you pay for the car. The interest rate that you get is going to depend on a few things, um, mostly on your credit score. So if you have a good credit score, you'll have a lower interest rate. If you have a bad credit score, you'll probably have a higher interest rate. So the higher your interest rate, the more money that the investor is going to collect from you. And it says the simple interest I on a principal P at an annual simple interest rate of R for a time span of T years is I equals P times R times T. All right, so I is the interest or the amount of money that the investor is collecting or profiting from their investment. P is the original amount of money that you start with. R is the interest rate. And T is the term of the loan or the time span of the loan. Let's look at our first example. It says Tom and Betty buy a two year CD that pays 5.1 simple interest from their bank for $150,000. And um, let me just briefly um, talk to you about what a CD is. CD stands for Certificate of Deposit 
and it is a financial product that is sold by banks. It's sort of similar to a savings account in that your money is very safe in a certificate of deposit. Your money is insured. Um, these investments are pretty much risk-free, um, which is why a lot of people um, like to invest in certificates of deposits. Um, and the difference between a CD and a savings account is that a CD has a fixed term um, and usually a fixed interest rate. So you go into a bank and you tell them that you want to invest this money. And for example, Tom and Betty are buying a two year CD. So they are promising the bank that they're going to leave their money um, in the bank for two years. And they're going to have this 5.1 simple interest rate for the, those, that entire two years. So at the end of the two years, Tom and Betty can go back in and withdraw their money. And at that time, they'll have earned interest on their money. So the bank is going to sort of reward them for letting them, you know, hold their $150,000 for two years. All right, so again, Tom and Betty have a two-year CD, um, and their interest rate is 5.1%. So it says they invest $150,000 at an interest rate of 5.1%. So if you convert that percentage to a decimal form, 5.1% as a decimal in decimal form is 0 0.051. Um, again, remember if if you don't recall, we've talked about this a couple of times before. Um, but to convert a percentage to a decimal, you just move the decimal to the left two times. So you then you would add in a zero here. So 0 0.051. All right. So it says find the interest that the investment earns. All right. So we just learned that formula is I equals P times R times T, where um, I is the interest. P is the principal, R is the interest rate, and T is the time or the term of the loan or the investment. Okay, so P is going to be, that's the principal, that's $150,000, that's how much they originally invested. Our interest rate R is 0 0.051. Um, you can, I've put in an extra zero in the front right here, so I've put in 0 0.051. You don't have to put that there. It's totally your preference. Um, if you just want to enter it in, in the calculator is 0 0.051, that'll work too. And lastly, our term is two years. So let's just plug these numbers in. So we have I equals $150,000 times 0 0.051 times two. So P times R times T. So if you multiply those together, let's see what we get. $15,300. Right, so what that means is that at the end of the two years, um, whenever Tom and Betty come back to collect their money that they invested, they're going to have earned $15,300 in interest. The next part says find the value of the CD at the end of its term. All right, so the value of the CD um, at the end of its term, um, the CD is going to be worth the principal, so the amount that they originally invested, plus the interest that they gained. All right, so it's, that's $150,000 plus $15,300. So if you add that up, principal plus interest, that gives you $165,000. Sorry, let me say that again, $165,300. So that's how much Tom and Betty will be able to withdraw at the end of the two-year term. All right, our next example comes straight from your homework. It was important to me that we go through this problem because there's a couple of things in this specific problem that make it a little bit more complicated than the problem we just did, although the idea is going to be exactly the same. It says, find the simple interest I of the given loan amount. Round, round your answer to the nearest cent. When they say that, when they say round your answer to the nearest cent, that means round to two decimal places. 
All right, so let's find the simple interest I. It says there is $490 borrowed at six and three quarters percent interest for 277 days. All right, so we already know the formula for the simple interest I is I equals P times R times T. All right, so now we need to identify what P is, what R is, and what T is. P is really simple. This is the original amount that you um, borrowed in this loan, so that was $490. Next, we need to identify our interest rate. So we have six and three quarters percent interest. Obviously, this is more complicated um, than our last example. So let me go through and show you how you're going to convert this into decimal form. Very, very important that you always convert these percentages to decimals first. All right, so six and three quarters percent is the same thing as 6.75. If you want to know how I figured that out, um, all you would have to do is just go to your calculator, type in three divided by four and put that in decimal form. 3 divided by 4 in decimal form is 0.75. So 6 and 3 quarters is the same thing as 6.75. Now that you've got everything written out, now you can go ahead and convert it into, a, into decimal form. Okay, so right now we're in a percentage. We need to convert it into decimal form. And remember, the way that we do that is we take our decimal point and we move it two places to the left. All right, so... That gives us R equal to 0 0.0675. Last, we need to identify um, T, which is the term of the loan. The term of the loan here, recall, is supposed to be in years. Now, since they give us the term of the loan in days, this is only going to be a portion or a fraction of a year. All right, so this is just a portion or a fraction of a year really simple all you have to do to convert this into years is you're just going to say t equals 277 so however many days it was divided by 365 since there are 365 days in a year don't worry about simplifying these fractions there's no there's no point in it it'll it won't save you any time um, and usually it won't give you a nice um, decimal anyway all right, so the last thing we need to do is just plug these numbers in. So we have I equals $490 times 0 0.0675 times 277 over 365. If you multiply that all out, that gives you $25.10. So that's how much um, interest that you're going to have to pay to the bank or to the financial institution that you borrowed the money from. Um, if you borrow $490 at six and three quarters percent interest for 277 days. Note that in the homework, they already have put the, the money sign in there for you. So you don't need to include the dollar sign in your answer. It's already there. Next, I'm going to show you a screen recording of how I type this in my calculator. All right, let's move on to our next formula. Um, the next formula is for future value when you're dealing with simple interest. It says the future value of an account is the amount of money in that account at some time in the future. The future value, FV, of a principal P at, in, at a simple interest rate R for T years is, and there's two different versions of the formula. You have F future value FV equals P plus I. You use this if you already know what I is. Um, we actually just used this in um, the first example that we did. And the second version of the formula, this is the one you use most often. It's FV future value equals P times one plus RT. Use this if you don't know what I is. Remember I stands for interest. This is the formula that we will use most often. This is the version of the formula that we will use most often. All right, so make sure you write both of those down just in case. And I would also write down these pieces right here. 
just so you know when to use which formula. One thing I want to point out about your homework um, is that your homework will sometimes call the principal the present value. All right, so if you see the words present value on your homework, just know that's the same thing as the principal. A couple of things to note before we do an example. It's common um, for students to confuse the interest rate, or excuse me, the interest I with the interest rate R. Um, the interest rate R is a percentage, whereas the interest I is an amount of money. So here's what your book does to try to keep those two um, straight in your head. Anything that uses a capital letter measures an amount of money. So I, which stands for interest, P, which stands for principal, and FV, which stands for future value, all of those measure amounts of money. R and T, those are lowercase letters, and therefore they don't measure amounts of money. R is the interest rate, which we know is a percentage, and T is the term of the loan or the time of the loan, so that's years. So uppercase or capital letters represent amounts of money. Lowercase letters do not represent amounts of money. I need to talk briefly about short-term loans. Um, I just wanted to mention them to you. It says one of the common uses of simple interest is a short-term loan, um, such as a year or less, that requires a single lump sum payment at the end of the term. All right, so this is where you borrow the money. Um, let's say you go to the bank and you borrow the money for six months. Um, you're only going to make one payment at the end of those six months, um, and you're going to pay back the entire loan in one lump sum. That's, that's what's called a short-term loan. And a lump sum payment is a single payment that pays off an entire loan. Some loans, like a car loan um, or a mortgage on your house, require smaller monthly payments. Um, and then you have some loans, like a short-term loan, that require a single lump sum payment. Just depends on the type of loan that you're getting, how much money you're borrowing, um, and what you're borrowing the money for. All right, let's look at a problem from the homework um, where we're going to find the future value of a loan or an investment. It says find the future value, FV, of the given present value. Again, remember present value, that just means principal. It says round your answer to the nearest cent, which we know means two decimal places. It says you have a present value or a principal of $3,620 at two and three quarters percent interest for nine years. All right, so here's our formula. Since we don't know the interest I, we're gonna use the second version of that formula, which is FV, future value, equals P times one plus RT. All right, so let's figure out what P is, what R is, and what T is. P is the principal or the present value. That's the $3,620. Next, we have our interest rate. Um, once again, we're going ahead and writing three quarters as a decimal. So that gives us two and three quarters percent is the same thing as 2.75%. Now we need to convert that into decimal form. So we're going to move the decimal two places to the left, which is going to give us R equals 0.0275. And then lastly, we need to identify T. Um, so T is nine years. Now let's plug it in. So we have future value equals $3,620 times, in parentheses, one plus 0 0.0275 times nine. All right, if you multiply that all out, that should give you $4,515.95. All right, so for example, if this was a loan that you, um, maybe you borrowed some money from the bank, um, this is how much you would have to pay back at the end of the nine years. All right, so that goes in our answer box there. Once again, notice that your homework has already put the dollar sign out front, so you don't need to write that again. Now I'm going to show you a screen recording of how I typed this in my calculator.
All right, I want to show you one more example, and then this video, um, I have one little box I need to show you, and then we'll be done. All right, so example two, this is not off your homework. Um, this example says, find the amount of money that must be invested now at a five and seven eighths percent simple interest rate so that it will be worth $1,000 in two years. All right, so here's your dilemma. You want to invest some money um, in, into some sort of investment. You know that your interest rate is going to be five and seven eighths percent. And what you want is you want to, um, you want that investment to be worth a thousand dollars in two years time. All right, so this is, since they tell us it's simple interest, this is going to use the same exact formula that we just used. So FV equals P times one plus RT. Now let's identify what we know. So here is our future value. We want our future value to be $1,000. Our interest rate, five and seven eighths, is um, five and seven eighths percent. That's the same thing as 5.875%. The way that I figured that out is I just, I typed in seven over eight in my calculator and it told me that seven over eight is the same thing as 0.875. Now I need to convert that to decimal form by moving the decimal two places to the left. So that gives me R equals 0 0.05875. Make sure you include all, the, all of those decimal points in there to get an accurate answer. And then lastly, it tells us that the term of the loan is going to be two years. So let's fill in what we know. We know the future value is 1000. We don't know the principal P. We don't know how much that we want to invest originally. That's what we're trying to figure out. And then we have 1 plus the interest rate was 0 0.05875 times the term of the loan was two years. I'm going to go ahead and type in everything that's inside the parentheses over here. I'm going to type that into my calculator. All right, so when I type that into my calculator, that gives me 1.1175. Okay, so I have 1,000 equals P times 1.1175. Now I want to get P by itself. So to get, B, to get P by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 1.1175. That's going to cancel out the 1.1175 on the right, leaving us with P. And if you plug the left-hand side into your calculator, that gives you $894.85. So that's how much we need to invest right now um, for so that that investment will be worth $1,000 in two years if you have the interest rate or the simple interest rate of five and seven eighths percent. Now I'm going to show you a screen recording of how I plug this in my calculator. So there's the first part. Now here I'm dividing 1,000 by 1.1175. Let me show you that one more time. First, I'm doing the stuff that's inside of the parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.05875 times 2. And then next, I'm going to divide 1,000 by the number that I just got, which gives me my answer. And I've rounded it to two decimal places. All right, here we have our last um, piece of information I need to give you. Some financial calculations that you'll have to do in the homework will involve computing the term T either as a whole number in years or as the number of days converted to years. Um, and in that case, um, when they give us, let's say that they tell us um, that the loan went from February to August. So in order for you to figure that out, you would have to know the number of days that are in each month. So here I've got you a little table where it tells you the number of days that are in each month. Um, you probably know there's a few little tricks to remember this, like count, counting on your knuckles. Um, whatever way you want to memorize this. I don't think I have this on the formula sheet, um, but I'm, I think on the test, 
I don't require you to know this. I'll just tell you how many days it is. So I won't make you count them up on your own. But there are a couple of problems in the homework where you'll have to count it up on your own. All right, that's it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, don't forget you can always email me at jberry at ccga.edu or you can post in our um, discussion board in the Q&A coffee shop.